Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. I've got a copy of Warhammer Quest Cursed City here. I'm ripping it open so that we can get straight to painting some of these hero figures. Who knows if I'll ever actually play this game, but this box has a bunch of really great models that I want to paint. There's a team of heroes with a lot of variety. There's also a whole pile of villains. So who's first? Well, the most prominent characters on the box are Captain Imelda Brazkov and Jelson Derrick. I like them, and I think they might be fan favorites. If I do play this game, I'll definitely want to have these heroes painted up. I got them built up and primed in black. I have them super glued to small bases to give me a little more room to work. When I'm almost done painting, I'll snap them off and put them on to their proper bases. After they were primed, I was able to find and fix one or two sneaky mold lines, and then it was time to pull out my paintbrush. Witch Hunter first, Jelson Derrick. Actually, I think he might be a vampire hunter. Also good. I don't have a strong vision for how to paint him, so let's make the easy choices first. That's a brown leather trench coat and a matching pilgrim's hat. I'm also getting an undercoat of brown onto some of the straps and stakes, and we'll fine tune those a bit later. Early on I also jammed some flesh color onto the sliver of face that you can see above the collar and under the hat. The armor on his shoulders and shins is going to be tire black. This is kind of a blue black, and I like it. From here, I've got a few more shades of brown for accessories like its belts and pouches. The more time I spend with this model, the more I realize that this guy really likes his leather. His trench coat is double-breasted, and that doubled up region over his chest is styled to look a bit like body armor. Or maybe it is body armor. I made that a different color from the rest of the coat. I tried out grey-green first, but settled on light yellow-brown. As I kept coloring him in, I realized that this guy might end up being all browns plus a smattering of metallics. I normally work with bright, fun colors, but let's forge ahead and see what happens. I mixed up a red-brown mahogany color for the stock of the rifle with the underslung stake launcher. As for the stakes themselves, I ended up getting them base coated with light tan. They're wooden stakes, so I don't want them all to be exactly the same color. I've got some brown and green-brown washes here, and I went through and stained a few of these with different color tones. Later on, I'll do a brown wash over all of them, so that they'll be a bit similar and a bit different. I used a dark steel color on pretty much all of the metal bits on this guy, from his hammer, to his rifle, to his belt buckles. So how are we doing? The primer is pretty much covered up, and things seem to be headed in the right direction. The face gets a bit of wash. It's really hard to get a brush in there. This is an interesting model, because that silly hat of his is way more important than his face. As I started refining things, I switched to a different metallic paint. At first, I had been using a very runny Vallejo metal color, because I liked the smoothness. But, for the tiny belt buckles, I like the accuracy and control of a chunkier paint. In this case, P3 Pig Iron. With the base coat coming along, I was ready to pull out some Agrax Earth Shade and wash some of the leather. For now, I'm doing a targeted wash in the recesses, the borders between colors, and anywhere with a lot of texture. Oh yeah, and off camera, I painted an eye, an eye patch, and a tuft of grey hair. They look okay. And now let's weather the trench coat and the hat. I started by stippling on some lighter brown. I'm concentrating on the raised folds. This is meant to be random damage to the leather, and it's also going to add some contrast. After stippling, I came in with a sharp little squidmar brush to add some thin lines as scratches. I did a bit of highlighting on some of the other leather colors, and then it was time for wash with strong tone all over the jacket. Ordinarily, I try not to wash big flat areas because it can leave unwanted stains. Stains on leather isn't necessarily a bad thing though. Leather is always soaking things up and gaining character, so this wash step isn't as risky as it looks. Hmm, how are we doing? I think Jelson needs a bit more color, especially with the way that I'm painting Imelda. 
The solution I came up with is to do an edge highlight on his armor with Mephiston Red. Black and red match the colors on the box art, and I think this livens things up just enough. It's time to snap Jelson off of his temporary base and get him based up properly. But first, Captain Amelda Braskoff. I've got ideas for her. Early on, I knew that she was going to have turquoise armor. It just seems right. I'm starting by giving her a base coat in Vallejo Blue, and from there, I'll layer on some turquoise. For more easy choices, the owl bear fur on her back is going to be brown. I think a combo of red-brown and turquoise will look nice on this model. I made her gloves and under armor brown too, and then I loaded up with turquoise. The turquoise that I happen to have around here is from Army Painter. It's one of the paints in that range with shoddy coverage, which is why I undercoated with that Vallejo blue. I did two or three thin coats to get it looking right. Moving along, I got flesh tone onto her face, and then layered on some lighter brown onto the owl bear pelt. Steel for the sword. Again, we might as well take care of the easy choices early on. I still don't know what I'm going to do for the cloth at her waist and her cape. We'll figure that out later. Let's make the armor look awesome and then go from there. I'm using Null Noil to do a targeted wash in all of the joints and recesses. I want to make sure that we have dark shadows and high highlights. As it turns out, the recesses in Imelda's armor aren't quite as sharp and deep as they are in Space Marine Power Armor. The wash wasn't staying where I really wanted it to be, and this step was pretty messy. In retrospect, instead of wash, I should have just used a sharp brush and painted black. Live and learn. The next step is to use turquoise to clean up the mess I just made with black wash and make sure that those lines are nice and crisp. Okay, this is better. We've got the base coat and the shading done. Now let's add a whole bunch of highlights. I'm working from this triad of teals. The strategy is to mix up a few intermediate colors so that I can layer on a progression of highlights. At first, I'm trying to be bold and work quickly. I'm slapping down that lighter tone anywhere that I think might catch some rays of sunlight. I'm highlighting major portions of plates and trying not to overthink things. If you zoom in on any of these highlights, it might not make much sense. Also, close up, they look a bit chunky, but I'm a firm believer that there are more right ways to do this than there are wrong ways. The important thing is that we're adding a lot of contrast and color to the mini, and chances are the overall effect is gonna be cool. As I move to lighter colors, I'm covering smaller areas, and each step is faster than the previous. With the second and third layers of highlights, I'm also concentrating more on giving the armor some edge highlighting. And here we are. I think this looks neat. Let's keep adding in some details. Having that turquoise armor sorted out helps me to choose all the little accent colors. I've got some liquid gold here to try to get some nice smooth gold bits. I still don't know what color to make the cloth though. It vexes me. I am terribly vexed. One plan was to use a cross-hatching technique tiny lines of color to build up from black and make a textured red or green or something. Actually, that's the whole reason I primed these minis with black instead of something else. The longer I wait though, the more that black cloth is looking correct. You know, something else that vexes me is this sword. There's a hair or something in there. It's not perfectly smooth. Can you see it? I can see it, and it vexes me. I decided I'd rather burn this mini to the ground than let that sword stay hairy. I put some alcohol on a piece of paper towel, and I wiped all of the paint off of the blade of the sword until it was down to bare plastic. I reprimed with black, and then took out some Vallejo Metal Color Silver. Whatever that defect was, it's gone now. Great success. I gave the face a wash with Reichland Flesh Shade and then I pulled out my smallest brush and painted her lower lip with a mix of red and flesh tone. Using all of my focus and that same tiny brush, I also painted her eyes. At this point, the two minis looked like this. 
both promising in their own way, but Jelson is brown and drab, while Imelda is very teal. I wanted to add a color to bring them closer. I decided on red. On Jelson, that red was the highlighting on his armor plates. On Imelda, I decided to work some red into the cloth. First I painted over the primer with tire black to match Jelson's armor, and then I added the red as an accent color. That fireball emblem from her sword hilt and the clasp of her cape is really simple, and there's no symmetry to worry about. So yeah, let's see if I can freehand a fireball onto the cloth. This is a good place to try out some freehand. If I mess up, it's easy to come back with black and make it right. I think it turned out pretty well. I liked it so much that I even changed the color for the clasps on her cape. From here on out, it's fiddling with smaller and smaller details. I highlighted her hair and made a variety of other small tweaks and fixes. Okay, let's get them based. I snapped the models off of their temporary bases and put them onto proper bases. Then I used PVA school glue to put down a thin layer of sand. I'm trying to mimic the bases that I saw in some of the box art. After the sand, I added a second thin layer of PVA glue on top. When that was dry, I painted on some black primer. I'm doing something a bit different for the base rims. The black plastic base rims look good, so I'm gonna see if I can get away with not painting them at all. We'll see how that goes. When the primer was dry, I did a gentle dry brush of light grey. The sand and the plastic rubble under the mini's feet take to this quite nicely. Finally, I added a few grass tufts from Gamer's Grass. And there we go! These are looking pretty nice. I thought about giving them one more painting session to try to make them even better, but nah. I have a switch in my brain that tells me when miniatures are done, and these minis are done. My first heroes of the Cursed City are ready for questing. Thanks to Games Workshop for sending me this box of review stock to take a look at. Hopefully I'll get to play one of these days. For now though, what a cool collection of models. A few years back I bought the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower box because it also has a ton of cool models. Cursed City seems to be a very similar product. Nominally, Cursed City has a few more models than Silver Tower, but only if you're counting bats, rats, and objective markers. Silver Tower was $150 and Cursed City is $200. It's a nice box, but then again $200 is still a lot of money. As always, Games Workshop inflation far outpaces actual inflation. Water is wet, and the sky is blue. So far, the assembly has been going pretty well. The bits are fitting together nicely, and most of the seams are well hidden. I don't know what's going on with this model though. That's a lot of crazy seams to put on one piece of cloth. I'll need to level up my gap filling skills before I paint this guy. On the whole though, I really like most of these models. If I ever end up playing this game, I'll let you know how it goes. In the meantime, I plan to paint more of these minis. I just need to decide who's next. Perhaps I could choose a mini randomly somehow. Well, that's it for this time. Like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. And as always, thanks so much for watching.